Hi, and good evening. I'd like to welcome you to Poem Praise 2. I do thank you for tuning in. I hope that peace and blessings have been upon you and your family this day. And we are going to get right back into the Black Woman's Guide to Understanding the Black Man. And with this, we can certainly go ahead and finish it out with this take. This is take 75. And it goes like this. Now, as an example, number one, Nelson Mandela believes in political Resolution, negotiations, with attack and a war as a last resort. Number two, Martin Luther King Jr. stood for nonviolent protest, love your enemy, and prayer to Jesus. Number three, Malcolm X touted impending racial war, wanted blacks to adopt Pan-Africanism, and denounce Christianity for Islam. Now the purpose of public publicity promoting black male heroes should be so their values can be as an example of progress. The fact that many black men claim to support all three of these black men leaders is another example of their confusion regarding who to align themselves with. They do not know how to judge the value of the ideas of black men leaders. Their philosophical concepts are clouded with faulty interpretations and emotions which prevent them from recognizing the real instead of imagined. Worth of a black man leader. Additionally, they think they are owed some kind of special consideration or adjusted treatment because they are black. Another mistake the black man made politically was trying to alliance himself with the Jewish community excuse me, because of what they perceived as a unity based on both races being rejected by the Anglo-Saxon Europeans. They had always heard about the anti-Semitic behavior that Gentiles practiced against the Jews because they accused them of killing Jesus. The black man and the Jewish felt discriminated against in America. The black man, in his untiring search for an ally outside of himself, clasped hands with his Jewish brothers and looked forward to a long but inspirational march for freedom, respect, and equality. However, the Jewish man spent no time in trying to convince the Europeans to accept them as equals, invite them to their parties, hire them on their jobs, and fall in love with them. The Jewish community immediately went about determining their own internal priorities and ignored everyone else and went directly to work. They had talents and skills they brought with them from their homeland and through determination and sacrifice and being mocked and insulted, they have built an empire. And they enjoy admiration and respect even from those who disagree with their business tactics. They are not as monolithic as they were 40 years ago, but it has not stopped them from persevering towards success individually. They are motivated high achievers while the black man got stuck in the gully. He dug himself by never giving up on trying to force the Europeans to share America with them. The Jewish community have the same religion, same traditions, and the same linkage to their homeland which they support vigorously. And the Jewish citizens in their homeland recognize and accept them as members in good standing of their tribe. Hmm. Not so for the black man. The African citizens living in their motherland are quoted as saying, they don't want the American Negro back in Africa because they practice too many of the white man's ways. 
their own people do not want them in their present condition and do not recognize them because they have nothing in common anymore. Had the black man been enslaved but allowed to keep his name and religion, things would be different today. There would be a connection, a, a bond, but their ideas came in as many variations as their European last names. Each of the previously listed black men had opposing notions about how to go about obtaining freedom, justice, and equality for the black man. Several of them did not even like each other. The following additional list of an attempt to chart other black male from liners who over the past years have attempted to bring forth their contributions to the black man leadership pool. Every black mayor could conceivably be added to this list. While this list is not fully complete, it demonstrates the wide range of black man leaders who rose to command attention. Some of them made sense. Some made a little sense. And some made no sense at all. However, they represent the boldest ones who had the nerve to step forward with their ideas about how to ease the everyday pain of black life. A few other notice, noticeable black men leaders. Each of these black men leaders are or were in positions to advise African Americans regarding strategies and priorities to develop jobs, prevent the dissolution of the family, and strengthen the moral foundation of the black community. And I have 34 names and they go as such. Number one, Muhammad Ali, a boxer, a uh, conscientious war objector. Number two, Robbie Ben Ami, a black Hebrew Israelite. Three, Malefi Asante, educator of Afro Afrocentricity. Number four, Amiri Baraka, in parentheses, Lawry Jones, militant social activist and writer. Number five, Yusuf Bey, minister and entrepreneur. Six, Ralph Bunchi, UN undersecretary slash politician. Seven, Ron DeLumis, DeLumes, excuse me, civil activist slash politician. Eight, Megger Evers, politician, political reformist, slash, comp advocate. Number nine, Earl Graves, a publisher. Number ten, William Gray, politician, slash, UNCF director, slash, minister. Number eleven, Dick Gregory, health expert slash social commentator. Number 12, Nathan Hare, Black Think Tank founder. Number 13, Benjamin Hooks, NAACP director slash lawyer slash minister. Number 14, Yosef Ben Jochanan, or Jochanan, J-O-C-H-A-N-O-N historian slash educator. Number 15, John H. Johnson, publisher slash cosmetic manufacturer. 16, Roy Ennis, core director and rights activist. Number 17, Malana Roy Karinga, Karwanza founder slash educator. Number 18, Minister Louis Farrakhan, NOI and Million Man March Facilitator. Number 19, 
Joseph Lowry, SCLC Director slash Minister. 20. Thurgood Marshall, Supreme Court Justice. 21. Clarence Pendleton, Civil Rights Commissioner. Number 22. Alvin Posat, or Pusant, P O U S S A I N T, M D slash psychiatrist slash social researcher. Number 23. A. Philip Randolph, labor leader slash transportation. 24. Paul Roberson, communist slash lawyer slash actor. Carl Rowan, journalist and U.S. ambassador. 26. Al Sharpton, community activist minister. Shelby Steele, professor, social commentator, and author. Leon Sullivan, OIC founder. 29. Louis Sullivan, MD, U.S. Government Health Director. 30. Clarence Thomas, Supreme Court Justice. 31. Douglas Wilder, Governor slash Virginia. 32. Carter G. Woodson, Founder slash Associate for Study of Negro Life. 33. Andrew Young, UN Ambassador and Civil Rights Worker. 34. Whitney Young, Jr., Urban League Director. Now, while the aforementioned list is admittedly only partial, few of them have been able to convey a message to help the black man improve his conditions on a permanent, ongoing basis. Most of the ideas these black man leaders present were only temporary. There has never been a major overriding agenda that all black men agreed upon and worked for collectively regarding their survival. His citizenship remains in peril and every so often the Civil Rights Act or Civil Rights Bill must be endorsed by the government to determine if the black man will be allowed to continue benefiting from certain basic rights allegedly already guaranteed for every American in the Constitution. He does not think it is odd that he is periodically reevaluated or that it still takes federal statutes for him to be accepted on a marginal basis. Rarely does a black man leader suggest to the black man that he stop forcing himself into places where he is not wanted and use that energy to build something for himself. Black man leaders should be held accountable for their errors in judgment concerning the needs of the people who rely on them for guiding for guidance, excuse me, and truth. Partial proof of their mistakes is visibly apparent based on the fact that 60% of the homeless are black men. The rest are made up of black women, black children, and other races. These homeless black men are in various states of mental disarray from drug addictions to alcoholism to insanity to sober poverty. Another half million black men are in jail. The number of homosexual black men is growing daily and many others pursue interracial unions to escape the entire predicament. Employment reports say that approximately 2,000 jobs per week are being eliminated due to downsizing because of a stagnant economy. And as quiet as it, as it is kept, let me repeat that one, and as quiet as it's been kept, embracing curriculums in Afrocentricity and celebrating Christmas time Kwanzaa does not help African American men to enhance their survival or improve their lot. Racial Incidents are on the rise throughout the country, and tempers are short. 
The collapse of the black family continues to impact on the development of black males and alienates him from black females. The young claim that contemporary rap music serves as a catalyst for positive public change. But rap has not proven itself to prevent black youth from inflicting crimes on each other. To the contrary, rap tends to stimulate ruthless behavior and barbaric language. Word. Black men are dying in various stages of death in shocking record numbers daily among all ages and social stratus. The remaining black men have a big responsibility to take steps to save their own lives. Nobody cares whether he lives or dies but him. He has no more time to waste negotiating in the boardroom for crumbs from European-controlled tables. He must rearrange his priorities and prepare to make a few personal sacrifices. You'll have to reject the built-in limitation of working by the hour for a regulated momentary boundary. So he should break that habit of the nine-to-five treadmill and spend every waking hour thinking about how he can survive on his own. Working nine-to-five with preset guidelines about what he must do and when to do it stunts his brain and makes him mentally lazy. He functions as a robot of sorts. He is programmed when to rise and when to go to bed, what time to eat and what to do on Sunday. All of these systems are programming. Hmm. They tell him what to think. He enjoys a regular 9 to 5 job because he doesn't have to give his schedule any special consideration. The black man must devise his own time frames and stop shutting his brain off at 5 o'clock sharp every day. It is time for him to cease leaning on other men for sustenance and to stop begging the courts to pass laws forcing other races to cooperate with his shameful condition by supporting his woman and child. Statistical scientists predict that in less than 50 years, the white man will be the minority in America. Who will the black man count on for jobs or blame for his? condition then. Our man needs a new idea, something other than voting to hang all his hopes on. The past 50 years have proven that he can sing, march, complain, or pray himself into a trance and it won't help him at all. He can't be out of work and out of ideas at the same time, not if he wants to survive. The black man is the greatest and most talented and strongest man on the planet Earth. Did you hear me? You want me to repeat that again? I think I should. For the Black Woman's Guide. We're reading the last page for the Black Woman's Guide to Understanding the Black Man. Now, the black man is the greatest and most talented and strongest man on the planet Earth. His enemies hate him and use him to fill the prisons and make money from his incarceration. Our man is wandering around and appears useless, confused and out of touch with the time and what must be done. Our most powerful tool to help him is to love him. Work with him. Forgive him. And become feminine. He needs more than good sex to thrive. 
Social media is not a lifesaver for the black family. Our man needs us now more than he ever has. He is the gift God gave us. And he is in the image of God. Greetings of peace. Shazarad Ali. And that does complete this book. Now, if you want to hear it from the beginning, just follow right, al right along from the introduction. Take one all the way up to take 75, and you can hear it piece by piece. Or certainly, you can go ahead and go out and grab your book and go ahead and read it. Hmm. Read it, take notes, highlight, go back, read it again. I think I might do that myself on a personal level. Read, read, read. The dome, the dome, the dome. And that does complete the Black Woman's Guide to Understanding the Black Man. I said we was going to get through that book, so I could certainly stay focused and we could start uh, reading this book. Uh, Lies My Teacher Told Me. Mm-hmm. Hmm. We could pick up on that book and, and finish this book. Yeah, it might take us a minute, but no, no worries. We got this. So uh, I certainly do thank you for tuning in. Um, be blessed. Have a wonderful evening from me to you here on Poem Praise 2. I will holler at you soon and talk with you later. And until then, later, y'all. All right. Peace to you and peace out.